Hi, Jim Ed. Today I'm going to be showing you some reactions with alkali metals, specifically the alkali metals lithium, sodium, and potassium. The alkali metals are all very reactive with water. The purpose of today's demonstration is twofold. One, to show you how each of these alkali metals reacts with the water, and two, to show you that as you move down the group, they become more and more reactive. And this is a property that's true of all metals. So, let's get right to it. Okay, so the first alkali metal I'm going to show you reacting with water is lithium. Lithium is a pretty soft alkali metal, as are all of them. It's shiny if you cut it open, tarnishes pretty easily on the outside. All of these have to be kept in mineral oil to keep them from reacting with water vapor in the atmosphere. Add it to the water. What you can see is some bubbling. See that it's reacting with the water. The gas bubbles that are forming are hydrogen gas. The next alkali metal we're going to watch react with water is sodium. Already you can see it's quite a bit more reactive than the lithium. Another interesting thing that sodium does is it forms a sphere on the surface of the water. You can even hear how much more reactive the sodium is. And as you may have noticed, it moves more quickly on the surface of the water. That increased motion indicates a more rapid generation of hydrogen gas. And there it goes. Get any remaining stuff off the sides. The last alkali metal we're going to want to react with water is potassium. Let's see how potassium reacts with water. I wanted to show you the reaction with potassium again because, well, it's pretty cool, but also I wanted to show you evidence of the chemical changes that I'm going to describe with each of these reactions. So what you see here in front of you is a cylinder full of water. What you can't see is that I've added a little bit of phenolphthalein, which is an indicator that turns a really kind of bright pinkish purple color in the presence of a base. Basically it changes color whenever the pH goes above about 7.5. The reason this is important is because the chemical change produces a hydroxide. The hydroxide changes the pH of the solution. So you'll be able to see when I put this piece of potassium into the water how that chemical change affects the entire system. What I didn't describe before, you can see here, that reaction was vigorous enough, as you saw in the other potassium reaction, to actually ignite the hydrogen gas. There's another thing that comes out of this process is quite a bit of heat. 
So you can see the phenolphthalein indicator has really changed the color of the solution. So that means that the pH of the solution is now gone basic. Really pretty color too. So it makes sense then, if I added something acidic back to the solution, like vinegar, enough to completely react with all of the base that's in the solution, it should go back to being colorless. And as you can see, it does. Now let's talk about the chemistry. Last thing I wanted to show you was how all of the reactions you just saw were very similar. If you remember, lithium, sodium, and potassium are all alkali metals. When they react with water, they each form hydrogen gas and a hydroxide of the metal. The hydrogen gas is what you saw bubbling in each one of the beakers. And remember, for potassium, the hydrogen gas actually was able to ignite. And then the hydroxides, aqueous hydroxides, are what turn the color of the phenolphthalein because hydroxides make solutions more basic.